Today we're going to be taking a look at another touchscreen plugin you can use on your Raspberry Pi to control Octoprint called Octoscreen. Recently, Sergio, one of our community members, reached out to me and said he was having some issues installing his touchscreen on his Raspberry Pi so he could use Octoprint. And we have done videos in the past on installing a touchscreen on the Raspberry Pi, but in that last video, we used the Touch UI plugin. And I do like the Touch UI plugin, but Sergio was trying to use a plugin called Octoscreen. And I really like the looks of the Octoscreen layout, so I thought I'd give it a try. I did figure out how to get it installed, but it wasn't all that straightforward. So I thought what better way to show everyone how to get it done than to make this video. So let's jump in and I'll show you a few different things about Octoscreen, what it takes to get it installed, and a few options you have to get it mounted. So let's get into it. So here's what we're going to use on today's install. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. I believe it is a 4 gig type. You will need some sort of Raspberry Pi. You can use a 3 or a 4, but you'll also need some kind of SD card. This one's a 32 gig, but you can use pretty much any SD card you want. Do pay attention to what speed that card might be. And here's the screen we're going to be using. This is a 4 inch hyperpixel screen. Here's a look at its info on the back. It is 800 by 480 pixels. That's probably a lot higher res than we need for this project but it's the screen that Sergio was having issues with, so this is what he sent me. You can use pretty much any touch screen you'd like for this install, but you have to pay attention to what drivers they're gonna want you to use. I actually have to go out and get the vendor drivers for this screen to get this to work, but I'll show you all that in a minute. And because I can't mention power enough when we're doing these Raspberry Pi projects, especially when we're putting a screen on it, here's the specs for the power adapter we're gonna use. This one is 5.1 volt at 3.5 amp. Remember, the Pi 4 is gonna draw just a little bit more juice than the Pi 3, again, especially if you have a screen on it. And here's just one example of a screen mount for a touch screen. This is kind of a cool mount. I like the idea of having your LCD and your touch screen with your Pi on the front of the Prusa printer. That's kind of a neat idea. You will have some USB connections and power connections surrounding this, so you might have to get creative with wire management because you're basically going to plug your cameras and your printer in right here, so you'll have some stuff hanging out, but I still like this design. I printed this one out just for an example. I'll leave a link to a lot of the other examples in the description. This one is made for a 3.5 inch screen, I believe, but you can probably get a four inch one as well. Note this screen is a GPIO screen, so we're going to connect it with these pins right here on this header, rather than it being an HDMI screen. Last time we just used that HDMI connection to hook up to the Pi. So this one's going to set on these pins right here. It populates the full header, like so, and then you have these four metal standoffs where we can put some screws to attach it nice and solid to the Pi from the back. Our screws are in, our screen is on, we're pretty much ready to power up at this point. And before we get started on the configuration on what we have to do command line to get this thing working, I do assume that you have Octoprint installed and the wizard ran already on your SD card and it's working with your network, whether it be wireless or wired. If you need to know how to do that, you can check out this video up here in the corner. So let's get into the config. We're going to start here at the login screen for Octoprint, the fresh install that I just completed. You can use your IP, or most of the time you can use octopi.local, that should work for most of you. Go ahead and log in. Now before with the touch UI install, we would have went to settings and gone to the plugin manager down here, and then you can hit get more and search for that touch UI plugin. But Octoscreen hasn't hit the plugin list yet, so we're actually going to have to manually install it. So as far as here in the configuration in the GUI, we really don't have much to do. We're going to have to do everything from command line, and we're going to use our SSH tool, PuTTY. So we'll open up PuTTY. All the information for this video will be in the description below, including a document where I have all the commands listed. So we're just gonna load up octopi.local and we'll log in with Pi. And the default password is Raspberry. And just to note, we are using the latest version of Octopi, the image package, it is 0.17. Also, there's a lot of great guides on how to get this done out there on the internet. I'll leave you all those links as well. So the first thing we need to do is install the drivers for the screen that we're using. Remember, I have this hyperpixel screen, so I'm gonna have to go find those specific drivers. Usually who you bought it from will have a link for those. Here's the screen that we're dealing with out here on Amazon. And this doesn't give us a ton of information on what we need to do to get the drivers to this, but it will give us the name and the brand name so we can search for a GitHub. So I'm just gonna search hyperpixel 4.0 screen GitHub. 
And the first one is the GitHub that we need. So this is going to give you a rundown of how you can get the drivers installed so that your Raspberry Pi can use that screen. So the first thing we're going to do is run a curl command and download those drivers from the web. So we'll just copy this back to putty, right click to paste, hit enter. It's going to give you a warning. We'll just go ahead and hit yes to continue. Now it's going to say, what screen are you installing? We are using the Pi 4 and we have the rectangular screen. So we're going to go with option one. You might have a different Pi or a different screen. Choose your option. Again, every driver package is going to be different. Let's just go with one. It's going to confirm. We'll hit yes, hit enter. And you will need your sudo password, which is also Raspberry. After a couple minutes, it's going to download a few things, run some configurations. It does show the default configuration up here in the text. And it also gives you some information on rotating that screen. And I have found that it doesn't come up in the correct orientation for me. Also, this rotation script they give you doesn't appear to work, but there is a workaround for that and we'll do that next. It wants to know if you'd like to reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot, make sure that screen's gonna come up. The screen did boot, but it's gonna come up in command line and that's not gonna be very useful to you on this touch screen. That's where the OctoScreen plugin comes in, but we have to make sure the screen's gonna work first. Also note that the direction of the text is currently running left to right. We wanna flip it so that it's running from the bottom up because we're gonna mount it in this orientation. Now you can change this for whatever mount you'd like to use. I'm just gonna show you how it would mount if you were using one of those Prusa side-by-side -side mounts. So we'll jump back into Putty, we'll log back in. Again, I couldn't get that rotate script that came with this hyperpixel screen to correct my issue, so I just used what was available in the Octopi image in the initial config file. These are parameters that can be used with pretty much any Linux that's gonna be installed on the Raspberry Pi, but when they assembled Octopi, they made it easy for you to get to and change. So we're gonna change directory cd into forward slash boot. If we take a look in there, you should have a config.txt. Let's go ahead and jump into that with our nano text editor. We'll do sudo nano config.txt. And you'll need your sudo password. And here's where a lot of options for configuring your Pi are going to be on an Octopi install. But let's scroll down to the bottom. And in the Pi 4 section, we're gonna comment out this DT overlay. This is for the VC4 V3D driver. For some reason, this seems to mess with this touch screen. It's gonna be different for every screen, but this is what I had to do to get this one working. Right here in that section, we're gonna do display, underscore LCD, underscore rotate, equals three. And it appears that this works with a zero, one, two, or three left, right, upside down, or right side up. You might have to play with it to figure it out, but to get the text from the bottom to the top in the orientation that I want, three is what seems like it worked. So before we make any more changes, let's go ahead and test this change. You can hit Control X to exit, Y and enter to save, and let's go ahead and reboot again. And now the text is running in the right configuration, so I know it's right for the mount that I'm gonna use. Again, play with those numbers, change it to whatever you want, whatever fits your mount, but this works for us. Now we can go ahead and move to the Octo screen install. So we'll once again log back in. And now we're back in, the first thing we're gonna do is install some desktop support tools. So we need some Linux tools and utilities to be able to help Octoprint be able to paint that screen to use the touchscreen interface. Again, all the commands will be below in the doc, but we're gonna install live GTK, X server, Xorg, xinit, x11, xserver utils. This should be all that we need to support that screen to get it to display correctly. So we'll go ahead and let those install. Now all our utilities are installed, that just takes a couple of minutes. Now we can do a web git to download the OctoScreen package. There's the whole command to the GitHub. We'll just go ahead and hit enter. We've downloaded the file. Now we can use a dpack command to install it sudo dpkg-i and the octoscreen package name. The current version is 2.5-1. And we'll hit enter. It's installing the plugin. This is the equivalent to what you would do in the plugin manager. It just isn't available in that manager as of yet. It probably will be down the road. And now that that install is complete, you can see the install actually went ahead and started that plugin and it's already working. It is important to note that if your printer isn't plugged in, it's gonna repeatedly try to initialize it, trying to get it going again. 
Once it's plugged in, it'll stop cycling like this. But if you think there's something wrong, don't worry. Just plug in the printer and it should stop doing it after it finds it. Now, if you have an issue with how the Octo screen is installed, you can edit its config file and there's a couple different options in there. I am currently running with the default, but if you need to make changes, you can go to slash etc slash Octo screen slash config. And we'll just take a look at it. But in here, you can adjust the resolution, where you'd like the log file to go, the OctoScreen style path, what style it uses. By default, it's gonna use the default web interface and API key, but you can even change that stuff up if you have multiple Octoprint instances or something like that. Now, here's the next hurdle we have to jump over. And let me explain this a little bit. So when I say flip something clockwise, I mean we're physically flipping the screen. So when we rotated that screen image, we actually rotated the screen clockwise to get it to work like we expect it. But since we did that, that's gonna change how the touch calibration is gonna work. It still thinks the touch response is gonna work in this mode. So if you try to touch any options right now, they're gonna be somewhere over in this neighborhood. And that's not gonna work for us. So we have to go in and make a configuration change to get it to work as we expect it to. So in our config.txt file, we did this display LCD rotate and we set it to three. By setting that to three, we effectively turned it clockwise 90 degrees. Now we have to alter that touch matrix to follow along with how we flip the display. There's a great instructable out here explaining this in depth. This is what I followed to figure out how to change it. But basically, we're gonna to have to go in and change the matrix up so that it knows that we swapped it 90 degrees. And after you have your screen drivers installed, you should be able to go into XORG config and change all that up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna add option, transform matrix, and this string of numbers. Thanks to this instructable, we know we switched it 90 degrees. So this is the one that we can use. So we'll just copy this. We'll head back to Putty. We're gonna change directory into slash user, slash share, slash x11, xord.config.d. And if you do an ls to take a look in here, and you're gonna have a couple of options in here for config files, but for touch screens and input touch devices, they're probably gonna be in live input.config. So we're gonna do sudo nano 40 live input.conf. We'll edit this file and we need to find the section for the touch screen. You can see this first one right here is match is pointer. It's not a pointer device. Let's just scroll down. And this is match is touch screen, and that's the one we want. And under the last line of that section, before the end section line, we're just gonna add in our option. We'll just right click to paste. Option transformation matrix. Remember, it is case sensitive if you're typing this in by hand. Get your quotes right and I am gonna leave spaces in between all those vector numbers. And that should correct our screen. So let's go ahead and control X, Y, enter to save. And let's go ahead and reboot one more time to make sure that change comes in. And now when we touch the screen, the buttons should be exactly where we think they should be. That makes it just a little bit more complicated, but there's a ton of great info on how to get this stuff done out there. Now there's just one more thing that I wanna show you and that has to do with any service that doesn't want to come up on Reboot. And sometimes things like OctoScreen, I've had that happen. So if for some reason it wasn't coming back up on Reboots, all we really need to do is add that service to the rc.local file. So let's just take a look at that OctoScreen service. You can do that with service, OctoScreen, status. You can see up here we're active running, started OctoScreen, everything is good. If you see that any service is dead on reboot, and this is just kind of extra added bonus tips here, you can just add those to start automatically since we already know the service name. So the easiest way to do that would be to edit rc.local. So let's do sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash rc.local. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of this file, you'll have an exit zero at the very end. Right before that, you can add the service that you'd like to start. So we'll use system control, S-Y-S-T-E-M-C-T-L, and we'll just tell it to start Octoscreen. 
Again, this isn't necessary, it's just if you're having issues, but this will get it started at reboot every time. You can control X, Y, and enter to save. Now that OctoScreen is up and running, it's cycling through trying to find a printer, so we'll go ahead and plug our printer in via USB. And as soon as it finds it, it flips to the main screen of OctoScreen. It's very simplistic, but I think it's a lot easier to use this way because the buttons are a lot bigger. And now you can make sure that all of your keys are accurately controlling your printer. This is going to default to the default settings that you have in your filament, I believe. We'll go ahead and hit bed temp. It sets it to 100 for that filament. You can see it did go ahead and update it to 100. Let's go ahead and heat the extruder. It took that one to 210. We can turn those off for now. We can go to the home section. We can just home all. It's moving correctly. Go back. Print will show all the files that are on the OctoPrint instance locally. If we go back to the web interface, we can just drag in some random G code here. Back to the touchscreen, if you hit print, you might have to refresh with that button there. You should see the local G codes. You can select them and hit print. Up here in actions, you can move the printer around manually. You can extrude some filament, change the fan speeds, temperatures. Here you can increase the bed or the extruders to whatever temperature you'd like. Unload filament, and then back to home if you hit filament, you can select which tool you'd like to use to give you a little more versatility. Back to home, configuration, you can set your bed leveling, network connections, Z offsets, system information. It'll let you shut down, restart OctoPrint, things like that. So there's a handful of options you can do in here. I really like the layout because it's simple and the buttons are really easy to hit on these smaller screens. So it's just another option out there if you'd like to use some sort of plugin with your touchscreen and OctoPrint. So there we go, we have OctoScreen up and working, and after quite a few tweaks, we were able to get the touchscreen working as we expected it to. Now this configuration where you have your Raspberry Pi and your touchscreen right in front of your printer might not be for everyone, but I can see some advantage to it. You can interact directly with OctoPrint without having to go back to your computer's web interface or pulling it up on your phone. So it might be something others want to check out. And this video might make it just a bit easier. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.